All right, so what was unique about your appearance on the John Kerwin show compared to maybe other shows you've been on? John went with the questions. You yeah. know, he, he actually pursued what we were talking about, and I found that very admirable and also the way to do it. Yeah. Is, is that something you don't typically get from other, other hosts? Um, I just found that, that he, he had a natural uh, way of doing it. I, I, think that, I think to be good at, at this, I think you have to be able to do that to a certain degree, but it's just a sign that, that for me that, that uh, I felt that, that it was shaping itself. And so, you know, I just really did more as, a, as a, one artist to another, well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I kind of wanted to get into a little bit about that. Um, you've kind of been around um, you know, a couple decades here and, and seeing how things have progressed. How would you say, you know, art, television, film, you know, has changed since you first began? It's become more and more about money and about um, likes and opinions. And, um, I, I, in a way, there's interesting work that's being done uh, that wasn't done in those times. And I think that that's very positive. I would say that the, the problem for the actor is it's very it's much more difficult than when I was a young actor because so much of it is reality programming. It's, you know, in a sense, there's a much greater minefield. It's, there's so much more uh, going on. I think that one could probably find and develop things maybe easier now, not necessarily to reach a large audience. That's always going to be problematic. But I think that the arts are finally reaching a point where the question is changing. This is what I found with, with the visual arts where we really are starting to say, what is it that inspires us? What is it that we need to cultivate? Like a gardener, what's the garden I need to grow? So I guess that maybe is um, the question coming up underneath it from the changes. But I don't, I, I mean, I, I would think, I could maybe go through and like be critical about the changes, but I, I don't think that that gets at it. Because I think that it's more like you know, a current keeps bringing new, uh, in a sense, benefits and new detriments with it. So we just keep navigating. Cool. Yeah, I, I, and on the flip side, are there things that may have you know have stayed the same throughout this entire process, but your perspective or maybe understanding of it has changed? I think I've become very okay with the nature of an acting career. You know, I think that when you're younger, you are much more defined by what you think it might be, or if the certain variables come up, this could happen. So you're always thinking in a way down the road a bit. And I think that when you journey through an acting career and you're not really looking down the road at what might come because you realize if something will be, it will be. But there's more of the overview of how the things that worked, the things that didn't work, in a way the narrative makes more sense. It's like you start to see the life that grew around the, in a sense, the, the, the things to celebrate and the things to be disappointed by. And oftentimes in a career you think it's the career right. and how well the career is doing, but oftentimes uh, the so-called failure at a certain point in the career opens a door that would not have opened had the so-called success remained. So it, it, it's a very mixed bag, and you start to understand that, that there really is a much deeper art form, which is your life that's being cultivated over and above any career. <laughs> For sure. Kind of with that in mind, do you have any advice or anything you would say to yourself, you know, with all of the experience and, uh, and the knowledge that you have now, anything that you would say to yourself when you were first starting now that you have this new perspective on art and, and what it means to be, you know, kind of successful or embrace yourself in the art? I, I would tell myself to trust your uniqueness more. Don't worry about trying to be like others. That's not what is important. What's important is to be yourself and to realize that in that self, really and truly, the old saying, you can't please everyone. And <laughs> to quote Ricky Nelson, so you do have to please yourself. <laughs> I guess Ricky Nelson has it. <laughs> For sure. Um, what, and because you, you, like, we've talked a little bit about this. You're, you're kind of a renaissance man as far as, you know, doing the art and, and the theater and the film and, you know, television. Um, you kind of talk about how all of those things kind of are at, the, at the, its core or something. What do you think is the most important thing to understand when doing any kind of creating? I think that the questions we ask necessitate different tools. 
So certain questions need to be asked with poetry, some with wine, some with song, some with music, some with the... And I think that that's maybe the key, is that we begin to recognize that for every question, there's an appropriate tool. That's why I go back to the Renaissance, because when you see the Renaissance polymath, you know, the, the philosopher, they're surrounded like with spokes of a wheel, and all these different things, everything from math and geometry to physiognomy and astrology and astronomy, because it was saying that the human condition is all of these things. So if you're asking a question about the stars, this is the tool to use. If you're asking a question about love, these are the tools to use. But, but we are all of this rather than just one question or one approach. And so I would say that, that for me there's been a great journey of understanding that, that the questions we ask develop the art we uh, really experience and we, that we bring forth because of those particular questions. So do you think maybe there's, in, in today's modern kind of art culture or, or nature, that there's too much emphasis on people being, you know, special to just acting and special yeah. to just this instead of, you know, being fully in, involved in, in all art forms? Well, I, I found that that really did sort of breed confusion in my own career, that I found that I was telling John that I really had to back off my fascination with so many other directions and things because it confused people. Because our culture really, are you an eye, ears, nose, or throat doctor? Right. You know, what are you? As opposed to the limiting. Uh, and, and that's one of the, I think, one of the fundamental problems is that that happens to our ego, too. So we start, well, I'm only what I am paid for. And everything else is just a hobby, or it has, it's not as important. And, and I think that that's why a lot of what we need to do always in our, in our journey is to talk to ourselves, to affirm to ourselves, saying, wait a minute, no, no, no. You don't have to agree to that agreement. You can define terms, at least where you live, at least how you approach things, that says, I will look at every question and I will honor the question. From honoring the question, I'll realize there are certain tools I need, and therefore I will trust that the question will lead me toward the, the tools. And that's what I've always found true. It's always changed my approach, depending on what I'm seeking to know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it just helps you. And, you know, even as an actor, you, if you are more full into into the art or drawing or whatever, it helps you take a more wide general approach to seeing this, a larger perspective of who this role is and who this character is. You know, as and that's, to just that's why this. your generation in particular is synesthesia. It's this cross-pollinating of the, the, between music and visual image and acting. You know that we really are moving into a time that is saying, like multimedia, you are all of these things. So allow yourself to be triggered by all of them. Do you know, hold that composite self. Do you know, not the isolated, I am that and I'm not that, but I am all of this. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's why I think the actor in us as human beings, I don't mean professional, but I just mean as, as human beings, is that which says, listen, Give me material to work with. If you want to change something, begin to feed that with those ideas. You know, that's why I think the, the actor that feeds themselves with painting, with imagery, with great writing, again, has a depth and resource that is simply missing if you just show up to appear on screen. Right. And, and, and I think that that's why, you know, we're, we're, we're continually having these conversations of how do we try to reclaim what is so essential to us that seemingly gets lost in the, the mix of things when it becomes about making a living, right. trying to pay the bills, you know. It's kind of like art is becoming more focused on the money as opposed to just, you know, embracing, I, I do the art because I enjoy it, I, f I get something out of it, I'm inspired, I yeah. feel like I'm creating and inspiring others as opposed to, I, I, I'm doing this, I, I like to do it so I should get paid for it. Yeah. And I, and I really feel like that's the only thing we can do. One of the essence of my work is to create a counterpoise, a counterbalance, and say, you can't say that's right or wrong, that way of thinking, but it is inherently limited. So it's that question of what do I need to grow? And that's what I do. I say to young artists, I say, be a gardener, think about this is essential to me. And even if I don't share this with the world, I have to share this with creation because I love this and this matters to me and I will grow what matters to me. And if the world isn't interested with what matters to me, I'm interested. So I will attend it. And I really think that that perseverance in the long run is what will cultivate a different approach 
to the artist and, and the story of, of creation because it will be taken back by those who do from those who critique. Right. Do you know, and, and I said we have to reclaim creation from critique. Yeah, I mean, it's really got to get back to the base of creating for creation and yeah. as opposed to just pleasing, you know, at points. Um, now, we've obviously taken a lot of your time, and we really no, but appreciate I, 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 it. I get these conversations <laughs> are, I think, essential. Yeah, so, and it's so. great talking with you. We loved yeah, having you on. We'll definitely try to get you back on. Um, yeah, now, you have art um, and books out where people can go yes. to get more of you, more mm -hmm. uh, of your ideas, and just your general you know, uh, create, creations. Um, where can people access them or pick up a copy of their own of your art um, books? My art books, my, my tarot book, my are all available through my website, which is leemccloskey.com. That will direct you to Amazon. Um, you can also Google my name, Lee McCloskey Art, Lee McCloskey Cosmogramma, Flying Lotus, Lee McCloskey Rolling Stones, Grimoire, Lee McCloskey, do you know, or Lee McCloskey Art, or Lee McCloskey, The Hieroglyph of the Human Soul. This is the artwork in my home, this painted studio of mine that's 3D that's mind-blowing and very unexpected. But the same thing, I did a, TED a TEDx talk uh, called uh, The Oil Painting, Phoenix Arise and the Blossoming of Creation. It's a very inspiring TEDx talk, but, but I would say mostly if people want to get or look at my work, if, again, you can Google the images by just putting my name and art. If you want to buy the book, which I highly suggest, uh, it's a very valuable tool. Also, at the end of the book, I created a selecting, selected reading list of about a hundred books because I realized one of the problems in our culture is we don't know how to think and we don't know what books to read. We don't know who the authors are. Right. So I thought, well, I will write down a hundred books that I feel help shape a philosophical mind, the capacity to think. To think you have to be able to <laughs> access resources. Right, and thinking, once you get the base of thinking, it starts, it's not just about understanding art, it's about understanding politics or anything exactly. else, but you have to be able to have this original thought first before you can right. proceed into these because others. Because art is the way we think, not what we do. You know, it's that willingness to step into the not knowing of something and trust that it will mentor us. So that's why, so really, in my, but with my work and my books, really check out leemccloskey.com, on Facebook, there's Olandar, O-L-A-N-D-A-R, uh, Foundation for Emerging Renaissance, which is uh, my, my site, and Lee McCloskey on Facebook. Uh, and then just social media. See, because there's, there's articles, there's things that are being written that are, that are really fascinating. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So just explore. <laughs> I know the younger generations know how to do this a lot better than I do. <laughs> anyway, so explore and... Uh, Enjoy the art. Uh, it comes from love, not critique, and uh, we can use a lot more of that. I don't know about you. I'm just exhausted with the critique. Yes, I know. <laughs> Let's have a more interesting conversation than that. <laughs> Thank you so Thank very you. much. For it's the John Kerwin Show.